Welcome aboard Just Jets with your captain, Matt O'Leary. Buckle up and enjoy the ride. Hey, what's going on? I'm Matt O'Leary, back with episode number 51 of Just Jets. What's going on? We have a lot to get into today, a lot of voicemails. We're going to talk some Deshaun Watson. We're going to talk some ideas for the team in 2021. And I got a little monologue, some thoughts on Robert Sala and some of his comments from this past week. But before all of that, are you ready for some football? The biggest game of the year is upon us on February 7th in Tampa, and it's time to get your balls feeling super. Our partners at Manscaped are here to tell you to join the 2 million men who trust Manscaped products for their below-the-waist grooming needs. You can head on over to manscaped.com. Use my promo code at JETS20 to get yourself pretty much anything they got over there. I mean, the lawnmower 3.0 for some trimming needs, do that. We got the nose hair trimmer. That's a big one. And the cologne I love as well and I use all the time. So if you're interested, head on over to the website, manscaped.com, and use my promo code JETS20 to pick yourself up something nice. So with that, let's jump into today's episode. Did Robert Sala diss the Giants this week? He was on a podcast and he was talking about the relationship between the Jets and the Giants and how the fan bases are a little bit different. And I kind of agree with him. So this is the quote that I'm going to pull from the podcast. He says, and he's talking about the, the relationship of the Jets and the Giants fans. But at the same time, so when you get here, you just feel that. Salah said, when we played the Jets in the past versus the Giants, no disrespect to them. They're absolutely a phenomenal franchise, but the Jets fan base has, is a lot more, feels more invested, I should say. They feel more invested in the way that they are so passionate about their team. Hell yeah, Jets fans are passionate. Uh, that's 100% true. And, and I don't think he's saying that the Giants fans aren't passionate, but he was comparing the Giants to Michigan and the Jets to Michigan State before that. And essentially the point was that Michigan and the Giants are looked at as this historic franchise who have you know all this history. And you know maybe, I don't know if white collar is the right word, but the attitude's a little bit more white collar where the... The Jets and Michigan State have that underdog, that blue collar mentality, which is true. I think if you are to survive in this town, you have to realize, you know, what the Jets are versus the Giants. I mean, I'm a Jets fan. You're a Jets fan watching this. We have to realize that the Giants are the quote unquote big brother in New York for a reason. They've been around longer. They've had more success. Uh, lately, they haven't been very good. Uh, the Jets haven't been very good either. But if the Jets are able to turn it around then maybe that narrative can start to change a little bit. But this is, you know, a, a team that's been around a lot longer. Their fan base is more of an old school mentality. You know, they, they have this reputation of one of the better uh, franchises in the sport, one of the more well-respected franchises in the sport. And the Jets are the more, you know, the scrappy, the punching bag, whatever narrative you want to, you know, say here. But it's kind of the truth. And, Robert Sala kind of is embracing that and wants to change that, which I like. I think he wants to have that underdog mentality. He wants to have that passionate fan base, which Jets fans are absolutely passionate. Have you seen the comment sections on these videos? Have you seen the, the twi on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, all the threads and the comments or on whatever forum you're on, Jets Nation, so on and so forth. There are so many avenues that Jets fans pursue to talk about this team. And they're pissed off because they haven't had a good product in a really long time. So, yeah, they are a passionate fan base. We had a guy outside of uh, the Jets facility looking for Robert Sala in his car, trying to see when he was going to get there. Like, yes, this, this franchise's fans are desperate and really want to root for a winner which is just it's going to be refreshing because for the first time in a long time fans are for the most part very excited about the future of this team a lot of people love the Robert Sala hire they have four first round picks in the next two years that they could either move in a trade or they could potentially you know uh, look to draft and build that way and Sam Darnold or taking a new quarterback. There's a lot of intriguing things that's going to happen this offseason. And usually Jets fans, and this is the case with a lot of fan bases, but usually Jets fans are very, very uh, intense with their opinions. But 
Something that everyone seems to agree on right now is this team is in a much better direction with Joe Douglas and Robert Sala leading the team than what they were with Mike McCagden and Adam Gase, and that should be a given. Like The coaching staff is significantly better. It's an absolutely an upgrade. Uh, so did Robert Sala diss the Giants? I don't know. It was maybe like a backhanded compliment, so I guess that's kind of a diss, but I understand what he's trying to say, and I agree with him. To me, the, when I think of Jets fans, it's the, you know, the scrappy – blue collar mentality, lunch pail to work, whatever cliche you want to use, where the Giants are, you know, the the more successful big brother and the one that you have to look up to and you don't like. It's I get it. I get where Robert Sala is coming from. And I kind of like I said, I kind of feel the same way, man. I I get it. And uh, I love having a coach with that mentality. Uh, The last coach just didn't have a personality at all. So With that, let's get into the voicemails. We have a lot of questions to get through. We're going to start things off with Roger in Comac. Matt, Roger from Comac calling. Matt, great show. Uh, Thank you. Before I get to go off on my rant here, but uh, I got to tell you, I'm I'm just getting you know sick of people in these mock drafts saying that uh, you know they're projecting a running back in the first round to the Jets. Um, I don't see how in any way that's even going to be possible. I mean, for one. LeFleur is bringing over the, the Kyle Shanahan offense, right? That offense, it leverages a back-by-committee approach. Yes. So we're not Agreed. talking about any high-profile running backs that are running uh, that are running behind that line. I mean, it, let's take the Niners, for instance, right? Raheem Mostert from the Super Bowl year, their top rusher, he was undrafted out of Purdue. Last year, 2020, their top rusher was Jeff Wilson, another undrafted running back out of North Texas. And, you know, I don't even have to mention Mike Shanahan, his father. Um, he was getting ridiculous production from late-round running backs and endless undrafted guys. So, you know, for these people who are, who are projecting in these mock drafts, a first-round pick dedicated to a running back, they are out of their mind. I agree. That is just not going to happen. I don't even think – you know, the Jets are going to draft a running back before the fifth round at the earliest. So, you know, you got to give me a break on this stuff. You know, the, 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 the Jets, if they're going to go with the Shanahan offense, there's no way on this earth that they're going to draft a running back that high in the first round. No way. I'm telling you, it's going to happen fifth round or later. It can't happen any later. Let me, you know, let me know what you think. Yep. Because honestly, I am just, my mind is just going nuts here looking at all these mock drafts. Great show, by the way, Matt. And uh, go Jets. Thank you very much, Roger, for uh, checking in and for the kind words. I, I agree with you. They're not going to take a running back in the first round. If you look at what Joe Douglas did in, in round one and beyond in the draft, he seems to understand positional value, which some teams really don't. Uh Example, taking a running back number two overall when you need a quarterback. Uh, Not going to name any names here. But there are teams who can get away with taking a running back in the first round. For example, the Kansas City Chiefs taking Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. They have the luxury of taking a running back that early because of how deep their team is. Running back is is probably the most easily replaceable position in the sport. Now, I'm not saying that you can necessarily just pick any undrafted free agent and plug them in and they'll turn into an 1,000-yard rusher. But I think you can get better value as the draft goes on. I think you can maybe sell me on the absolute earliest, the third round. Um, Fifth round could seem likely as well. I think we're looking at two different scenarios or two options here. I think you're either, like you said, getting a mid-round running back, third, fourth, fifth round, somewhere in that window, and pairing them with... LaMichael P. Ryan and Ty Johnson, or you're going with a veteran running back who's a little bit more cost effective. Jamal Williams is my favorite of the bunch, uh, but you could talk Marlon Mack, Gus Edwards, guys like that. Uh, I would have said Jeff Wilson, but he just resigned uh, with the 49ers and pairing them with those two. I agree. It should be a running back by committee because I don't think you have the luxury of you know putting a ton of assets into that position right now. And on top of that, we've seen this Shanahan offense be successful, like you said, with a running back by committee approach. So I agree. That should be the move for uh, the running back room going forward. And perfect segue, Adam from Jamestown up next wants to talk about the running back room going forward. Hey, Matt, it's Adam from Jamestown calling in. Um, Yeah, I was just wondering, 
Um, what were your thoughts on our running back situation, and would you like to continue moving forward potentially with Michael P. Ryan and Ty Johnson? All right, thanks. Love the show, man. Absolutely. Thank you so much for calling. Uh, I like Ty Johnson a lot. I think he's the best running back on the Jets roster last year. I'm a little lower on LaMichael Pirine than some. I think you know some are penciling him in as an automatic RB2. I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I do think they need to add another running back, but it could be a depth guy. It doesn't have to be a running back in the first two rounds. It doesn't have to be a sexy name in free agency. Like Aaron Jones, you should not pay Aaron Jones. You shouldn't draft Travis Etienne or Najee Harris. Instead, you should sign someone for a third of what it's going to cost you to sign Aaron Jones. Or you should draft someone in round four or five, like Roger was talking about. And you have you know, a pretty nice running back by committee, those three on top of um, you know what you already have. And Ty Johnson, I think, is going to be uh, a big part of this offense next year. I'm excited what we see from him. Uh, it honestly wouldn't surprise me if he ends up being the lead rusher for the team next year if they draft their late round running back. Um, I think it's possible. Absolutely. Um, next up is Ronnie in New Jersey. He has some thoughts on Robert Sala and Deshaun Watson. So let's hear from Ronnie. Hey, Matt, what's up there, pal? This is Ronnie from New Jersey. What up? Huge fan of all your content. Thank Love you. what you're doing. I'm a diehard Jets fan. A little shameless plug. I also have my own little podcast. I'm a host of Inside the Leather Podcast, which Ooh. is a comedian's take on golf. Cool. So if any of your listeners like golf, check me out. Now, back to the stuff that I have in mind here. I just want to say, first off, I love the Salah hire. I love it. All right? I love the restructuring of the organization. Okay? Love Joe Douglas. I like Zach Wilson over Justin Fields in this offense, but I think Sammy D could actually do something with it. He's good on the run. I like it. I do. Plus, you add him with Sewell. Oh, my God. The two tackles would be monsters for a decade. Okay? But here's the thing. Watson? Deshaun Watson? Come on. It it has to happen. Think about the wide receiver free agents that are going to want to come play with Deshaun and play for Robert Salah. I, I can't even can't even think about what it would be like to have all this. We're talking Allen Robinson, possibly Mike uh, Goodson, Jackson, whatever the hell his name is, after he comes off of a potential Super Bowl win. Listen, Joe Douglas, get it done. Again, man, appreciate it. Love your content. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, very much so. Appreciate the energy on that, Ronnie. Good stuff, man. And I'm kind of with you on that. Watson, to me, if you're able to acquire him, just brings this extra recruiting factor, right? Like someone's going to want to come and play with this guy. And now maybe, you know, someone's going to want to come and play with a rookie quarterback. I don't know if Darnold has that really anymore at this point. He's kind of a reclamation project. But I agree with what you're saying, man. I think if Darnold is to figure it out in the NFL, this system could be beneficial for him if they decide to keep him. I love Wilson in this system. I think that would be my... Uh, preferred route if you can't get Watson, but obviously if Deshaun Watson is here, that changes everything. It really, really does. Uh, Next up, and thank you, Ronnie, for calling in. Next up is Brinson in Oklahoma. He's got some questions on the special teams unit. Hey, it's uh, Brinson from Oklahoma, calling in from Oklahoma. And um, I just want to say, hey, Matt, um, love the show. Um, Especially being from Oklahoma and and Arkansas, uh, that's pretty good. But anyway, Awesome. My question is about special teams. Uh, now with the news about uh, Brian Boyer coming back, uh, I think it's really it's a really good move. Um, obviously, our special teams, especially this past year, wasn't necessarily the greatest. But I think, in general, you know, we're probably middle pack. You know, maybe not the most elite core, but we're not the worst. So I think we're above average around that. So uh, basically, my question is. Um, you know, we got a solidified punter in Braden Mann, uh, did very well this season, his rookie season. Um, but, like, what do you feel like we could use that kicker? You know, he's a revolving door with Castillo and Ficken and all these different kickers. Um, so you think we're going to draft one, we can, like, pick one up if there's uh, any relatively good ones. And also if we need a better kick and punt returner because, you know, we had uh, Barrios back there. So uh, I don't know. I just want to – See what you think about um, what we could use to um, solidify our special teams even more to make us a better team. So uh, that's all I got to ask, and uh, go Jets. Thank you. Yeah, really interesting question here, Brinson. 
Um, to me, the biggest upgrade they need is the kicker. You have your punter. You just drafted him last year. I think you can get by with like Braxton Berrios or someone like him returning kicks and punts. That's really an element that's been taken out of the game in recent years, with especially more so on kickoffs than punts. But uh, I, I think you could find someone to plug in there, either on the roster or you know in the draft relatively easily. To me, the one that I want to focus on a lot is kicker, and I would sign someone. Uh, I don't want to use another draft asset on a kicker or a punter after you just did that last year, taking a punter in the sixth round. Uh, so I would like to sign Ryan Suckup. He's getting up there in age in his mid-30s, but kickers these days can last until they're 40 years old. We've seen it time and time again with them, you know, Matt Bryant and uh, uh, Anna Vinatieri and so on and so forth. But uh, I think Suckup has the chance to hit the market. He's kicking for Tampa Bay this year, so we'll see him in the Super Bowl. He's been really effective for them. Um, you know, and whatever it takes. You go out and sign a kicker for $2 million, that's what you do. And, you know, I think with the Jets have the cap space to do that this year. Why not spend the extra million, million and a half, whatever it is, to get a really damn good kicker than to just continue to go through the motions and, and pluck and play guys? Like, they haven't been able to figure it out since Jason Myers, and he was only he really here that one year anyway. Um, so it's been a revolving door ever since, and they need a legitimate solution there. Um, so that's my take on it. Thanks, Brinson, for uh, checking in with us here. I uh, really appreciate it. Next up is Ali in New York wants to talk about Watson and got a little mock draft for us. Hi, Matt. It's Ali calling in from New York. And I just wanted to talk um, to Sean Watson and sure. know your thoughts about this. Um, I say so we trade in the number two overall pick. Seattle picks the next year and our first rounder from there. After that, three first round picks. I think that's enough to get Watson. And I'm going to do a three round mock draft after that. So I think for pick number 23, we pick Wyatt Davis. He's still there on the board. Okay. I, I don't know. Maybe he won't. Um, but a lot of mock drafts I see that he's still there, pick 23. And I would take him. And at pick 34. Oh, by the way, I'm trading Sam for pick number 52 from Indianapolis. Okay, that makes so, uh, sense. Pick number 34. I take uh, Patrick Patrick Jones. The Love second. Patrick Jones. Okay. He's an insane stud. I think he'll be really good under Robert Sala. So, yeah, I think at number 52, we take, um, I think at number uh, 52, we take um, cornerback Asante Samuel. Okay. Uh, I think he's really good. I think he's a good fit for the defense. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, pick number 66. Uh, I see us taking, um, I see us taking Kenny Gainwell. Gainwell. You know, he's a good fit. Ryan Kenny loves Kenny Gainwell. Summer. I think he'll be really good. And at pick number 87, I'll take Seth, Seth Williams. Mm. I don't know. 66 and 87 can change. Like, we could take Seth Williams out. 66 and uh, uh, Gainwell at 87. Um, Kenny Gainwell at 87. Okay, thank you. Bye. Yeah, uh, I like that mock, I really do. I don't know it. Where did he have Patrick Jones? 34. I think he's a, a late first, early second round kind of guy, Patrick Jones. I've seen some mocks where he goes as late as the third round. I, I just, I personally don't see it. I, I think he doesn't. I'd be surprised if he made it past. 45, 50 in that range. Um, I really like him. Wyatt Davis's stock has gone down after the injury, but I'm still very high on Wyatt Davis. He's the best guard in the country. If you can get him at 23, I would highly, highly consider it. have to know the medicals, of course, but uh, I think this is a really solid mock draft, and you bring up a lot of good points. Um, and if you're you know, trading for Deshaun Watson, that's a really nice way to build the team up uh, through that mock draft. So I like it, Ali. I think that was a solid one for sure. Uh, next up, who do we got? Jeffrey in New Jersey. He's got some takes on the off season. Hey, Matt, it's Jeffrey from New Jersey. Um, and this is probably the Jets most important off season in a very long time. You know, we got our head coach, um, but we have a big question at the quarterback position. Um, and I'm a big fan of Joe Douglas. I really believe in him, but, um, I really, you know, if he doesn't get this right, uh, if he doesn't figure out this quarterback position, 
and this team underwhelms next year, um, then, you know, I don't believe this. Um, I wouldn't want this to happen, but you're going to be hearing noise about uh, Joe Douglas's job security next year. Possibly. Um, just like you're hearing about it with the Giants. You know, you've been hearing about it with the Giants for about two years now. And you're going to start to hear it about Joe Douglas if he doesn't get this right. So I think that's in the back of his mind when he's thinking about whether or not he should do a trade for Deshaun Watson because this is so important and this will shape the future of this team for, uh, you know, 10 years from now, hopefully. So I really hope they make this trade. And I think that um, Joe Douglas knows that, especially with Woody coming back, he's got to make some moves this year, especially compared to what he did last year, which was practically nothing. But um, I love the way he's building this team, and I do think it would be um, smart for him to really, really get Watson um, or otherwise just figure out this quarterback position. Anyway, Matt, uh, just let me know your thoughts, and thank you for the show. Have a great day. Yeah, man, really appreciate it. Um, Eventually, he's going to get some pressure, Joe Douglas. Um, I I don't think it's necessarily warranted he he has a long-term contract what he signed for six years this is going into his third year i i think he gets depending on what he does at the quarterback position could extend his time uh if he trades for deshaun watson i'll do all three scenarios if he trades for deshaun watson he probably gets this year and next year after before he gets any heat if they underachieve if he keeps darnold then that maybe is just cut to this year because right if they screw like if they go let's stick with Darnold to go four and twelve again are they going to keep him around maybe but and if he drafts a quarterback that obviously extends his timeline my thing is if he sticks with Darnold and that fails that will probably accelerate his firing rather than going with one of the other two options um so that's why I think that's part of the reason why I think the other two options are more likely to happen at this point too. Um, so I really get that. I get that concern. And I do think that it, the, you know, quarterback's most important position in football. Definitely have to figure that out. It's a must for this off season. So thank you, Jeffrey. Next up, let's go to Ben. He's got a mock draft for us. Let's hear from Ben. What's up, Matt? It's Ben from Jersey. So with all the Sean Watson rumors swirling around the Jets, and us probably have to deal with our first, our two first round picks this year. Right. I'm just thinking I would leave a little bit of a mock draft going through round two and four because I probably won't have time to get through it all. So let's um let's get started. So pick 34, I'm going guard Wyatt Davis out of Ohio State. I like and that. Daniel there. Jeremiah's recent mock draft, he didn't have Wyatt Davis going in the first round. If that's the case, I'm taking him in a heartbeat in the second round. He's the best guard in the country and. I think we're getting Joe Tooney in free agency. So aligned with Beckton, Joe Tooney, Connor McGovern, Wyatt Davis, and George Fan seems pretty damn good in my opinion. So pick 43, this is from potential Sam Donald trade in San Francisco. I'm taking edge rusher Patrick Jones out of Pittsburgh. So um, Patrick Jones, he's had, I'm pretty sure, like at least at least eight sacks every year as a, as a, a Pittsburgh Panther. Big fan. And um, he's going to be learning under Robert Sala, who grew Nick Bosa and Eric Armstead into double-digit into double-digit sack players. And um, take sixty-six. So um, this is assuming we get Curtis Samuel and not like Allen Robinson or a big receiver like that in free agency. So since Curtis Samuel is a smaller, speedier guy, it made sense to go with a big end zone threat like Terrace Marshall. Okay. He can play out wide and in the slot, and he has, no, makes he runs the cleanest routes, and he's also a threat after the catch. He does, he has all the tools to succeed, and honestly, he might. I think he might be a second round pick, but if, I think he, there's a chance he falls to the third, and in that case, I think we should definitely take Marshall there. Pick 86. I'm taking cornerback Elijah Molden out of Washington State. Now hmm. I know you you. You love thing you would think to take a cornerback in the second round. Agree. But I'm thinking we signed Richard Sherman in free agency. We roll with him, Bryce Hall and Brian Poole starting. Okay. And I think we have flexibility to take a cornerback a little later. Hmm. So Molden's usually a, is primarily a slot corner, but I think he can play over the field. He has quick reflexes and he usually beats the receiver to the ball. And he's and he's like he's an exceptional run stuffer for a cornerback. He's a little small, but with his athleticism, I think he can definitely succeed in the NFL. 
fourth round pick, pick 100. I'm going one of one of my favorite running backs, Kenny Gainwell to Memphis. Friend of the show. Yeah, I, he's I we love he's Gainwell. Third best back in the class. He has all the tools like Alvin Kamara. Hmm. He can slip out of tackles, make make people miss. He is great. He's a great pass catcher to the backfield, and I think that would just be a great weapon for Sean Watson to have. Let me know what you think, and as always, go Jets. Yeah, I like this mock draft a lot. I really do. Um, I need to do a little bit more research on the corner you picked. Um, I don't know a ton about him, but everyone else I really like in this draft class, um, it's solid. It is, and you make a salient point about um, waiting on corner if you're going to bring in a guy like Richard Sherman uh, or, or someone else from San Francisco maybe to pair with Bryce Hall. Uh, I personally, I like Ronald Darby a lot, and uh, he has that connection with Joe Douglas, so that would be my play for it. But, uh, you know, we'll absolutely see. I think it makes everything you said makes sense, Um, especially if Wyatt Davis falls out of the first round and you're sitting there at 34 and he's right there. How do you not take him? He's a plug-and-play starter at this level, and, you know, if the medicals check out, then let's absolutely do it. Uh, Thank you, Ben. We're going to go to Drew in New Jersey. Wants to talk Edge. Hi, I'm Drew from uh, New Jersey. Uh, I just finished watching your uh, top 10 edge rushers that Jets could draft, and I was wondering about Aziz Ojolare, um, mm. the edge out of uh, Georgia. Uh, I, I've been watching him, and I thought he's been really impressive. So I was a little surprised you didn't put him in his video, but... I was curious what you thought about him. Uh, Take care. Have a have a good rest rest of your day. And bye. Thank you. Yeah, the reason why, and there was a reason why I didn't put him on the list. It's not that I don't think he's a good player. Uh, He's just more of an outside linebacker, so he would be more of a fit in a three four defense. The Jets are going to be running more of a four three. So I don't think he's going to be a good scheme fit. That's why I didn't have him on my list. The guys that I listed were more defensive ends. Uh, especially early, and then there were a couple guys who were a borderline outside linebacker edge who maybe uh, outside linebacker defensive end uh, who could maybe be situational pass rushers. It wasn't so much of a like my top 10 edge rushers in the class. It was more so guys who I think would be good fits for the Jets, and uh, since he is more of an outside linebacker, I didn't have him uh, included, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, thank you, Drew. Next is Phil. In Brooklyn, who wants to talk Joe Douglas and Deshaun Watson? Hey, Matt. It's Phil, Brooklyn, New York. Um, It is currently Thursday, 10 a.m. Deshaun Watson has officially put in a trade request. Now, I don't know if anything, when you're answering this call, I don't know if anything's happened. I don't think so. Maybe they believe Deshaun Watson. I doubt it, though. But my question is, do you genuinely uh, think this is realistic, right? If you wanted Salah, we got Salah. But... Does it seem like a Joe Douglas move to you? It doesn't to me, but it does seem like a Woody Johnson move, or a, or a Christopher Johnson. It really does. I know. I know they like. I know they like big names. You know, they went out and got C.J. Mosley and all those weird players in 2019 free agency, 2018 free agency. Right. So it does seem like a move that they would want to make. But is it a move Joe Douglas would want to make? Good That's question. That's my question. Because um, you know Joe Douglas is. Uh, He's moving to Miami way. He's moving very slowly and doing everything right so far like the Miami Dolphins have. So, do you think Joe Douglas would want to give away those picks? Personally, my four picks, uh, maybe this isn't enough, but I would give away our first year this year, second of all, our Seattle pick this year, Seattle pick next year, and our next year first, and a couple of day two picks. Let me know what you think about that trade. And, uh, yeah, go to Sean Watson. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I I think that it's uh, an avenue that Joe Douglas should absolutely go down. Um, I, I think it makes sense to bring in a guy like that of that caliber. I with how we know Douglas values the uh, the draft. I don't know if he's going to want to give up those assets, which has basically been my take all along. That um, I think I would I would love it. I'm rooting for Deshaun Watson to be a Jet. That would be so much fun. But I don't know if Douglas is the kind of guy who would want to give up the draft capital to do it. Um, is that a mistake? Don't know. It depends on what he decides to do. Uh, but obviously bringing in a, a player like that changes everything. 
Um, so yes, it's splashy, and I see why you're saying it's more of a Johnson thing than a Douglas thing, but um, it, it, the, the difference is it would be a top five quarterback in their prime. The Jets have never done anything like that. So that would be a little bit different. And Phil, I think you'd agree with me in saying that would be a, a much welcomed change for sure. So thank you for that one. Next up is Brandon on Long Island has a Watson scenario for me. What's up, Matt? Brandon here from Long Island again. Uh, so I just had a question for you. Sure. So I know that the Jacksonville Jaguars are obviously not going to um, trade the number one pick for Deshaun Watson because you're not going to trade in division. But I thought of the scenario, right? If you were the Jets and you had the number one overall pick, would you still trade for Deshaun Watson? Because me, I would, question. I would do it, and then I'd say I'll give you the first overall pick, and then maybe one more pick. But I would, I don't know, I would still trade for Deshaun Watson if the option was there. But I just want to get your thoughts. Would you trade if you had the number one overall pick as the Jets? I don't know. All right, have a good one, Matt. Yeah, thank you for checking in and asking. I like this th uh, question. It's a thinker. <sighs> Obviously, you're not going to do it in division, but let's play the game that the Jets have the number one pick. Um, I think I'd probably take Lawrence. I think I would. But you could sell me on on trading it for Watson. It's That's a tough question. I'm glad the Jets aren't in that situation where they'd have to think that one out. I would probably just take Lawrence at this point. Um, the number two pick, like the difference between Lawrence and Justin Fields slash Zach Wilson is big enough to that you would want to go for the uh, Watson route. I understand that. I just don't think it's comparable with... Uh, looking at the quarterbacks are going to be there too, versus Deshaun. Uh, excuse me, a uh, Trevor Lawrence going up against Deshaun Watson. It's it's a tough call. It's a tough call. If you tell me that you want to trade for it, I kind of see it. I personally, I think I'd go Lawrence though. Um, Jeff and Callie also has some more Watson talk, so let's get into that as well. Hey Matt, this is Jeff from Cali, uh, calling in with a two-parter, and this Ooh, one is going to be okay. I guess a little bit different. It's not really so much a what would you do, but it's almost a what would you rather. All right. So obviously, I would not. I would not turn down Deshaun Watson. I would call up the, the new general manager of the Houston Texans. Don't remember his name, and write him a figurative blank check and say, write whatever you want on this for draft picks, and I will pay it. Right. Um, now, putting that aside for a second, would you rather have Deshaun Watson and in three years' time, you know, we, we acquire enough, you know, late-round talent and we, we acquire enough free agents that we win a Super Bowl, which is the dream, right? You, you, you acquire Deshaun Watson so that you can compete for Super Bowl. Or would you rather miss out on Deshaun Watson Okay. Draft Zach Wilson with the number two overall pick and build a super squad around Zach Wilson with the draft capital that you have. Joe Douglas is able to, in this scenario, uh, build his version of a, of a Super Bowl winning team with the draft picks that he acquired and do it the old fashioned way. Mm. And in three years' time, Zach Wilson turns out to be a franchise quarterback. And you win a Super Bowl with Zach Wilson. These are both dream scenarios for the New York Jets. And in this NFL, you never know what's going to happen. Would you rather, which scenario would you rather happen, right? Uh, I mean, both both are dream scenarios. And, and I don't know, it's like, what which story would you rather have? Second parter for this question. This is more of a, this is more of a question and, and uh, or I guess like a mock off season. Okay. So say you do call up the, the Texas general manager and, and you say, okay, what do you want? What's your price? And he says, uh, well, our price is three first round picks. And you, say, you go, okay, well, that's fine. Well, uh, if you only want three first round picks, then I guess we'll give you 23. We'll give you uh, both first rounders next year. And we'll give you... 
uh, a second this year, and how about you get Sam Darnold as well? Just a little cherry on top. Hmm. And Houston goes, shoot, okay, well, we got <laughs> we did we got the three firsts that we wanted. Uh, we got a second as well, and and we got Sam Darnold, this quarterback that you know has a high ceiling still. Now with that second overall pick. Oh, he gets cut off. Okay, I don't. What What do you do with the second pick? Uh, I in that scenario, I would probably trade back and get more picks. Uh, I don't know if that's where he was going, but that's what I would do. Uh, and as for the other scenarios, both very interesting scenarios. Uh, they both lead to the same result, which is a Super Bowl. So I would say uh, Zach Wilson, because you wouldn't have to give up as many assets, and you can uh, have your own guy and come in and do it like that. So. Uh, I'd go Wilson, but I don't think there's a wrong answer to that. Interesting thought process there on um, on both of those scenarios and uh, that trade. I really think that if you're going to make the trade, it's going to take pick number two. But if that's a scenario in which it would uh, that would work out, then I would do it. Next up is Travis, and Travis has some receipts that he wants to show me about my draft grades. Uh-oh, let's see how I did. Hey, Matt. Travis from Ohio. Uh-oh. Hey, you know how I always tell you that I watch all your content and everything else. Well, I went back and checked out episode 22 of Just Jets, your draft grades video. There towards the end, me and Elias from Rochester asked you um, draft questions about all the guys we got. And you were pretty spot on. Okay, that's good. You don't have to go back and look because I took notes. Um, you said that back back then would be a starter. Truth bomb, complete. <laughs> Mims a starter, and when healthy he is. Agree. Davis a starter, and he put in the caveat of uh, if we trade. Adams or by go of uh, our man. So, uh, Zuniga, you even said then, rotational piece. That looks about and right. He kind of was when he was kind of healthy. So, you know that too. Uh, Michael P. Ryan, well, Michael P. Ryan, you said was a running back too. And now that James Morgan, he said it was the backup, and we're all disappointed in Joe Douglas for that one. Agree. Um, Cam Clark, I love the pick, and I think he's going to be a beast. I really do. Hmm. And he said he would be a 2021 20, That's right, starter. Okay. Which I still can see. So, Maybe. That might still come true. Bryce Hall, you said starter, but Let's 2021 go. potential mm-hmm. and potential second second round draft pick. He started this year and he looked really good in spots, and he didn't have much help in our secondary or that's for sure. And whatever. Anyway, Braden Man. The man besides you. <laughs> Thank you. Punter for the next 10 years is what you said. And had all those purple awards. So you said six starters. We had one, two, three. Four, five. Ah, uh, he got cut off too. Sorry, Travis. But he, yeah, looking back, um, I'll take that. It, it sounds like I was kind of on the money there. Um, and, and just looking back, man, if you can get solid starters and your first and second round picks, that'd be good. That'd be great. That's that's a win right there. Davis, I think, should start. So my vibe check, okay, on my predictions then versus now. Vibe check is pretty pretty much the only one that I've maybe soured on. My vibe check was Cam Clark because he, we didn't see him at all. I don't know if that was an Adam Gase thing. I don't know if that was a him thing. Um. So him, him and Zuniga have the hardest time taking it another step with. Um, Hall I think is going to be good. P. 
P. Ryan, I think, would be in the mix in the running back room. Uh, and I really think the top three guys you'll have as as starters. Davis, um, I think he starts next year. Uh, I definitely think that Becton's a starter next year and a damn good one. Uh, potential pro bowler or all pro next year. And Mim should be a starter on the outside. So I think that's solid. That's a really good draft from Joe Douglas. I hope he has another one like that in 2021. Jonathan from Albuquerque calling in. He wants to know what I think the quarterback room is going to look like. Hey, Matt, it's Jonathan from Albuquerque. Uh, first time caller, long time listener. This is how I think our quarterback situation is going to pan out, and I want to see if you agree. I believe that Deshaun Watson is not going to be traded until after the draft. I believe that the only way he's going to be able to force his way out of town is by holding out. And I feel like Joe Douglas sees this happening and just goes with the narrative I'm building around sand. And trades for Deshaun Watson after the offseason, obviously. <clears throat> and then we have a monster team around Deshaun. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, hope it's on your show. Thank you. Thank you for calling in, Jonathan. Really appreciate it. And welcome aboard. Um, I, I don't think Deshaun Watson gets traded after the draft. I'd be very surprised if he did. Uh, but... If he did, the Jets do have the luxury of having two first-round picks next year that they could play with. Um, so I, I I don't think – I think Watson gets moved before the draft for sure. Uh, league year starts March 17th. He might even get moved before that. We, should, we saw the trade last night with uh, Stafford or two nights ago at this point with Stafford. Um, but here here's my thing. If I had to make a prediction, so I think we see Wilson. I think that's probably the most likely. And then from there, maybe Fields and then Darnold and Watson somewhere around there. I really hope it's Watson. Uh, I think we're most likely to see a quarterback drafted. I think it would be Wilson of the two and then Darnold underneath that. So that's going to do it for me on this episode. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. Leave a rating and review. That really helps us out. We appreciate all the love and support. Once again, I'm Matt O'Leary, and I'll talk to you next time.